you all know, first prize is a Cadillac Eldorado. Anybody want to see second prize? Second prize is a set of steak knives. Third prize is you're fired. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, from time to time, I, a lot of you have written in, and uh, basically, you know, you've responded, I, I've mentioned on videos, I know a number of people inside of the publishers, but the people I know, I mean, I, I think when people brag about people they know within comics, first of all, it's a weird brag, I mean, I, I, I know a person, well, I mean, cool, you, good, good for you, you know them, I, I don't know what that really means, um, but in general, people brag about creators they know, people you know, people whose names, and, and granted, no doubt about it, if you are a friend of like Paul Smith or Walt Simonson, and you like go over and hang out at their house and, I, I don't know, swap stories, I'm jealous of you. That's awesome. I'd love to hear some of Walt Simonson's stories. I think that'd be amazing, especially if you could like bring like a, a bottle of whiskey over and you and Walt and Luis kind of all hang out and trade stories about what's going on. Not, 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 nothing gross. Don't be, don't be that person. I'm just talking you know, pure networking, just having a good time. That would be awesome. Uh, so I'm very jealous of you. But, but a lot of people I know within comics, um, I've gotten to know what, uh, <laughs> what, what actually, oh, sorry, uh, what a guy I knew used to describe as the little people. And the little people were the people who were like in marketing and distribution. And they're, they're, they're not the people who like, if you're a comic creator, uh, can give you a gig. And in the past, um, I remember I, I, I would make friends with creators, with artists and writers, and they'd be like, oh, you're well connected. And then they would find out I'm well connected to people who, you know, are what, you know, this, this guy said are the little people. And the little people being like the lawyers and the people who are marketing and the people who are distribution, basically the people who make the business run. But, you know, yeah, they, the, the little people, sure, the, 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 the people we're going to dismiss as unimportant, what, whatever you say. Anyway, um, and so I, I but that so and, and whenever they found out like, oh, he, did, he doesn't know uh, he does. He's not on a first name basis with uh you know, with, with Casada or Dave Buckley or, you know, any of those guys. Oh, oh, okay. Well, all right. Less interested. Suddenly, suddenly less interested. Um, but as it turns out, if you, and many of you know this from running a business, it turns out it's the quote unquote little people who usually get shit done and, and knowing those people and being able to be a good friend to those people often gives you more work than people think. Uh, but at times people have written in, and, and one of my observations in comics, and, you know, again, knowing a lot of the uh, kind of the auxiliary positions, and I've, I've you know, I've, as you know from probably listening to these videos, I've worked, I've consulted, I've done a lot of things in a lot of different companies, and one of the unique things about comics is some of the DNA that you would expect to exist in some of these roles doesn't exist. What I mean by that is if any of you have ever worked in an organization that has a sales team, a commercial sales team, and in some cases you may work for a company and not know those people because oftentimes the commercial sales team sits away from the other teams. It, it, they, they're not integrated with the rest of the company because the commercial sales team, their salary is usually based on some level of points or commission. You know, it's not all just, uh, you know, static, you know, pay. And uh, they tend to keep those guys separate because you want salespeople to be a little, uh, for lack of a better word, amoral, meaning their goal is to sell. How they sell, you know, you got to you gotta stay within the laws and just kind of general ethics. But generally speaking, you don't really want to know what they are doing in order to pull in that big account. You don't want to be sued later if it turns out that they, you know, coerced slept with, whatever it happened to be to give that account. You don't, you don't want that to be the outcome. But if those were the things that happened and then it never came to light and you got your money anyway, yeah, you, you know, you're not going to be unhappy is I guess the point. And what's unique about comics is that a lot of people in those roles are not, you know, are not typical. They're not, they're not what, you know, I'll, I'll, let me give you this story. Um, I was working with a company once 
And I was doing the role of product, meaning I was kind of helping to assess what the product should be, how to go to market with it, what what kind of uh, what features it should have, et cetera. And I was working on that. And I was buddied up with uh, the sales team. And the leader of the sales team was a new, they, they brought in a new leader to the sales team. And uh, she was, uh, we, I didn't know anything about her. You know, I, I didn't know what kind of personality would she be like, nothing like this. And this was years ago. This isn't, this isn't current, despite the accent I'm about to butcher. So I, I sit down with her for the first time. We're like prepping to go to a big client. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to get the product all set up and I'm going to do this demo. This is, this is kind of the stunt I'm going to pull to help uh, put everything together. And generally, I've always got along well with the sales departments because, you know, I, I, I think through what's going to make them successful. And that, that tends to be popular. So I'm sitting with her and she goes, all right, here's what we're going to do. All right. So first of all, we're going to go to dinner and then all y'all are going to, you know, you're all going to sit down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get a glass of wine and we're going to get real cozy with each other. And we're going to lift this glass of wine. We're going to all say, I appreciate you. And uh, everybody's going to be real friendly. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, through this thing, we're going to make them feel loved. We're going to make them feel like we're their partner and that we're there to support them. And then while we're doing that, I'm going to reach my hand under the table and I'm going to grip that. I'm going to grip the guy's balls. I'm going to put my hand right there, and I'm going to nestle those little balls in my hand. I'm going to feel those nuts. I'm just going to hold them right there, and he's going to know I'm holding his balls. And he's going to be like, this feels good, but also could feel bad in a heartbeat. And I want him to think that. She goes, so what we're going to do is, you know, we're going to say, you know, we could be partners. We could do more, but I need you to do your part. And if they go, yeah, okay, I can do my part. Yeah, this is mutually beneficial, which is what we want them to say. Then I'm just going to stroke those balls and make them feel good. But if they start to resist, I'm going to squeeze those balls because what I want them to do at the end of the day is know two things. Number one, we'll be good partners if we work together and they should try their hardest. Number two, they're my bitch. And I remember that and I'm like, and, and she says this and I'm like, fuck it. I love you so much because, and I mean, I mean that, I mean that, you know, platonically, I was not turned on. But it was great because it was so correct for that role. The person was a salesperson. Salespeople are designed to go out there and bust some heads and get shit done. Um, This is what salespeople, this is the natural DNA of salespeople. It's kind of like in the wild, a cheetah or a leopard, they're a predator. You don't have, you don't, you don't put a, you don't, you don't, you don't train a cheetah to hang out with a bunch of bunnies and other things that it normally eats and be motherly to those creatures. You, you, you know, the natural instinct of that animal is to kill and eat those people. And that's what salespeople are intended to do. That's their DNA. That's the purpose of their job. And in comics, one of the unusual aspects is that a lot of these people, they are in the job, but they're not, it's not normal. And again, I'm not talking about any of you. Some of you I know are creators. You listen to this. I'm not talking about you. Your job is to create and good for you. Create. That's, that's, that's what you're brought to the dance to do. But if you're going to have a functional company, whether you like it or not, and, and bear in mind this, this woman who I thought was great and she was awesome at her job, by the way, she killed it constantly. And why she killed it is she went into the thing. She's like, the objective is to make sales, put up numbers and win. And I'm going to do that through a combination of strategy and politeness and squeezing somebody's balls until they explode. And that is exactly the right, that is what you should do in that job. In comics, you look at it right now, and this is why I think comics are failing in some aspects of the U.S. market is because you have the situation where the, uh, you know, the movies are strong. The properties are well known. Everybody knows Marvel, DC, these characters, etc. Uh, people are, are more interested in comic. It's no longer a uh, geek kind of got to hide it. It's it's a subculture. It's now part of the mainstream culture, and yet the sales are are poor compared to where they were 30 years ago, and they are by financial numbers they're poor. So you know what would solve that? Well, you could you could create the new newsstand. You could do things in digital. There's a lot of, you could, uh, you could create a lot of market strategies. I still believe that if you brought a bunch of cutthroat people in, 
sales, marketing, product planners from a different industry outside of Marvel, outside of DC, outside of comics, if you brought them in to one of these companies, Image, DC, Marvel, if you, if you suddenly flooded the, uh, the company with a bunch of professionals from an industry where people actually give a shit, that company would run the table. Almost in like that within a year, that company would just be, be beating the shit. I'm talking like a madman, madman, madmen level of like people who are in there to go win, take no prisoners and win. I will tell you, um, in the sales, in the marketing, in the partnership departments at these companies, that those people do not exist. They do not. In the words of, uh, I'm just going to use this phrase over and over because I, I have to laugh every time I hear it. In the words of Gen Z, they are meow, meow men. <laughs> meow, meow men. These are people who are not serious people. What needs to happen in comics is I know all the attention in this video will not be as popular because I'm not saying that Vidai Allah is a bitch or any of that kind of stuff. It's that the, the, the thing that would honestly help it out the most is if some of these departments, sales, marketing, legal, and finance, actually got the, arch, you know, the archetype of what those roles should be. If you would be shocked right now, if at Marvel or DC, uh, the sales and marketing, just take those two, sales and marketing, fired every, you know, fired every, fuck it, let's just be mean, fire everybody and replace them with absolute ball busting, you know, headhunters, people are going to go out and scorch earth to win. If you found those people, and by the way, the money would be there. I mean, there's a lot of people who are awesome at that job and they would like, you could bring them in for $10,000 a year in salary, but $5 million in bonus. If they hit a target, they would knock that target out of the fucking park. A little bit of aggression would go a long ass way. This woman that I mentioned earlier, the one who, who had the ball squeezing approach, you put her in as head of sales for Marvel, that company would double its profits in a year. Make no mistake about it. The problem with a lot of these companies is that you do not have people who, whose natural instinct is to go win in those departments. And so while a lot of time is spent talking about the creative content that's put out, and make no mistake about it, you know, you, that, that's a problem too. I think another thing that would be really helpful is you bring in somebody who is a true product portfolio manager and you put, you give them, you give that person CB Sobolski or, uh, Marie Yavin's job. And you say, you know, go out there and your goal is not to just print happy comics and make fun and like I uh, participate in the comic community. No, your job is to destroy everyone else, to take all of the share and fucking kill it. it, it that it could be done. Comic industry is absolutely primed for disruption. You put somebody in there with a little disruption who's a true, you know, sw a heavy swinger. Somebody who's going to go out and actually, you know, go for the home run. It's it's wide open to win. So as much as, yes, I want better comics, I do read and collect comics. Of course, I want better stories. Of course, I want to enjoy that kind of stuff. A hundred percent. That is what I would love. If I'm talking about it from a, what would be healthy for the business? I would not start with the creatives, believe it or not. I know a lot of you are like, ah, oh, but the stories. Yeah, sure. I agree. Stories need to get better. But the number one, like silver bullet, to start to turn things around, change the culture in some of these quote unquote smaller jobs, these smaller people jobs, change the culture there, bring in some true absolute sharks. You'd be shocked at what would happen. And I do believe, and I may be wrong about this, that if they did that, um, you would see, uh, what would be weird is you would see a transformation in the business and you would wind up seeing better stories and better creatives in there as well. You would see a shift because suddenly the culture and the, the atmosphere of the company would start to feel like people playing for the big leagues and not people playing to kill time. Anyway, you'll have to trust me on this one, but it is what it is. All right. There you go. How, do you, how are you feeling about that story about getting your balls squeezed? Turned on or scared? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for listening.